Hey everyone, welcome to episode number two of My Favorite Things. My Favorite Things is a series where I share with you all the cool stuff that I found to be very beneficial to me as a hobbyist in the RC community for drones, planes, RC cars, helicopters, whatever. So here we go. <laughs> Item number one is something I put on my hands in the very cold weather here in Canada, and that would be these here gloves by PGY Tech. Why are they so great? Why do I love them? Well, it's because not only are they warm, but on the middle finger, index finger, and thumb, you can expose your finger so that you can have a better grip on something. And when you flip up the little fingery things here, there's little snaps so that this snaps back and it leaves your finger nice and exposed. Surprisingly, for the price, they're made out of pretty good material because as I've mentioned, I've had these for over a year, used them in two winters now, and they look like this. They look kind of brand new. It's, they're really good and they're nice and grippy on this portion and this portion here, the fingertips, you can touch your cell phone and select items on your screen just like you would with your finger. Now in Canada, it's super cold and when I use these gloves to do reviews, they work quite well. But if you're gonna be outside for a long period of time, your hands are gonna get a little bit cold, especially if you expose your fingers. So what I do is the following. First off, when I ordered these, I got one size larger than I need. These are extra large in size. Then I get these little cheapy gloves that you could pick up any place and I chop off a finger or two so that the finger I'm gonna use the most is nice and exposed outside of this little mitt. And then this mitt goes in this bigger mitt because it's an extra large size. Velcro it up and we're all good. So now when I expose this finger, it's exposed. It's worked really well because my hands stay super warm in the winter time here in Canada when I'm doing the reviews. What do I do when I'm flying drones in the spring and fall or driving RC cars? Well, let me show you. I use these gloves. These are spring and fall gloves and they are designed for the FPV hobby or the drone hobby, or you can use them for RC cars if you want. And they are a lifesaver. I love these things in the spring and fall. The material on them does feel like something you'd wear when you go swimming, but the material actually does keep the heat in and the bottoms are so grippy. You can grip anything. So when your hands are cold and it's hard to grip something, these bottoms are awesome. And I do the same thing with this glove in the spring and fall with these gloves. I just put the finger I want to have exposed and the rest just stay covered up. And you end up with something like this. So I don't need these two fingers exposed, only this one maybe. And that's what you get. And it's very, very warm for spring and fall like this. Now for what these gloves are and what they can do, they're not too expensive. So I'm gonna put links below to where you can find them. I believe these are available on Amazon in most countries. If not, I'll put other links. And these ones here, I think are available on Gearbest. I'm not really sure, but I'll put links below and you can check it out. And now on to item number two, which is the fire extinguisher. Why am I talking about fire extinguishers? That's because in episode number one, I mentioned LiPo batteries are really good if you store them in ammo boxes because if they catch on fire, well, if they're in an ammo box, it's contained. Now, just so nobody's panicking, a LiPo battery will not catch on fire unless you overcharge it. But the odds of overcharging a LiPo battery with an included charger that came with your drone or RC car is minimal, minimal, minimal. But a LiPo battery may catch on fire if it's damaged and you charge it even a little bit or it's fully charged and yeah, it's not a very good battery because of previous damage, then on a full charge, it might catch on fire at some point when you're least expecting it. So that's why I said store them in ammo boxes. Now, a few people wrote to me and said, don't forget if you store LiPo batteries in ammo boxes, make sure if they do catch on fire, there's room for the gases to vent. So I didn't show that the last episode, but I'll show it now. So let me show you really quickly. If I open this up, hopefully you can see it here. I'll get it nice and close. There we go. Normally I have a piece of rubber going along here to cause a nice seal, but I cut that out. I do leave the rubber in so it's down the sides. You can see here there's rubber down the side. Can you see it on this one? But there's no rubber in this little section here. So if gases are gonna vent, they're gonna get out right here through this area and pop out the front. So you wanna have two things nearby wherever you store your batteries. One would be your smoke detector because LiPo batteries produce a lot of smoke when they catch on fire and that smoke detector is gonna alert you that, hey, something's gone wrong, I better go check it out. 
The great thing, if your LiPo batteries are in an ammo box, well then the fire is contained in the ammo box, but you better be putting it out. So you're going to need a fire extinguisher that can handle electrical fires. So these ones here that I have in my hand, they're both the same. They're very inexpensive. They're available on Amazon and they do handle electrical fires. Looking at the front of this fire extinguisher, it says it's good for class A, class B, and class A. F, as well as electrical. But many people will tell you that if you're gonna put out a LiPo battery fire that's, you know, going rampant fire, um, especially if it's a huge fire, you're probably gonna need something like a Class D. These here may not put the fire out fully, but they're definitely gonna reduce the fire quite a bit. Now on my wall right over there, you're seeing a picture of it. Now I do have a class C fire extinguisher. It's not a class D, but again, it's just bigger and it will really contain a LiPo battery fire. No problems. So in summary, when a LiPo battery is on fire, there's a lot of heat produced. The idea is not to keep that heat growing and causing things around it to catch on fire. If you use these fire extinguishers, just spray and even on the battery and around the battery, it's going to cause everything else not to catch on fire. So that's the whole idea to have these little units with you. And I will put links below to where you can find these on Amazon. I would put links to a class D fire extinguisher, but it's massively expensive. I'll put one anyways, but it's massively expensive. <laughs> And now on to item number three, which is something many of you are gonna love. Now, LiPo batteries, as we just discussed, will maybe go on fire if they're fully charged. So one way to cause a LiPo battery to be very safe is to put it into storage mode. Now, DJI batteries are very, very smart and they will self-discharge and go into storage mode, except they don't do it at once. And did you know, well, at least I found this out recently, that say I go like this, and it's day one. Well, it's not in storage mode yet because I have full power. So this battery is kind of volatile. It, it wants to go. So now if I let this sit for about three days, it will go into storage mode. But say I come back on day two and I accidentally go, how much power is left in that battery and touch it? It resets the clock and it will take three more days for it to go into storage mode. Yeah, at least that's what I've been told. Don't know if it's true, but that's what I've been told. Then here's a phantom battery. So the product I'm going to show you today will put both of these batteries into storage mode in about 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Watch this. There's a viewer on this channel who goes by first name Alex and he invented this product called the Phantom Angel and he sells it on his website. He's been doing this since the year 2015 and it's getting better and better and better. Let me show you the Phantom Angel. There's a nice close up of it. And then if I pull it away, that's the size of it. It's pretty small. And the cool thing is you don't plug it into the wall or plug it into anything because it operates right off the battery that you plug in here, which would be your DJI battery. So if you order this unit, you just basically tell Alex, well, build me one of these and I want to use it for such and such a battery and he will build it to your specifications. So here's how it works. You decide ahead of time, do I want to put my battery into storage mode or deep cycle mode? So if you put it into storage mode, then it will drop your battery down at about 15 or 20 minutes, uh, down to about 60% from full power and that will be storage mode. And if you put your battery into deep cycle mode, it takes much longer because it's going to deplete all the voltage out of your battery down to a safe level which is perfect for putting it away because it's it's basically harmless at that point. And the next time you charge your battery, it's like charging a brand new battery. So you want to do that every so many charges so that your batteries will last a long time and be optimum. And if you look on top, you see a light bulb and that's where all your power is going to go. So when you plug in the battery and you select a certain setting, it's going to go to that light bulb and that light bulb is going to turn on and get very, very bright and hot and uh, your battery is going to deplete at a very safe rate. And in this example, I'm using a Mavic 2 Pro battery, which is fully charged. It's got four bars and basically I just connect it to the Phantom Angel to select storage mode or deep cycle, turn the battery on so it provides power to the Phantom Angel. And then I just press the little button on the Phantom Angel. The light bulb comes on. That light will stay on until it reduces the battery to 60% power and at that point the light will go off and the phantom angel will stop removing power out of the battery. Same is true if you select deep cycle it's going to take a little bit longer but it'll deplete your battery all the way down to pretty much one bar. So I'm going to put a link below to Alex's website on the phantom angel. Check it out you'll see it's pretty cool and the great thing is since it's one person who makes these and they're very professionally done and he's been doing this for a while he can make one to your specifications for exactly the batteries you want and you can have other switches on it, whatever you need. Just contact him. 
he'll make it and he'll give you a price and send it to you and it's all yours. And finally, a big thank you to Alex for sending me that product because it's been a lifesaver. I don't have to sit with my batteries discharging over three days. I can discharge them within 15 minutes and life is good. This is really decent. All right, on to item number four. <laughs> All right, item number four is on my cell phone and it's this item here called UAV forecast. If you press that, watch this. Do I want to go flying today? What's it tell me right there? Not good to fly and tells me all my conditions right here. Now, this app is for Android and iOS and it's free. You can pay and get more features, but I'm just using the free version. So uh, I'm surprised how many people do not use this app. This is one of the better apps if you are somebody who flies drones. It's pretty darn good. So let me just uh, give you a screenshot to show you what's on my screen and walk you through it really quick. Here we go. All right, you can see on my screen right here, not good to fly. And if we go from left to right across, it shows me right here the weather. That symbol of the, looks like a dust bunny or whatever blowing along, that tells me it's pretty windy out and you'll see that in a second. Next one over is the sunrise sunset. Next we have how cold it is outside. It is five degrees Celsius above zero. We have no rain in the forecast. Next, the cloud cover is at 62%. Do you notice it's red? That's because I've said it that if the cloud cover becomes above 50%, I don't want to fly because then it's no good to film. Next over, we have visibility, how far I can see, 16 kilometers. Go to the bottom left. There's the wind speed right now, 41 kilometers per hour, and then wind gusts up to 89 kilometers per hour, which is pretty darn fast. Then we have the wind direction, and the next three over are your satellites. It shows me that I would get about 15 satellites if I was flying a drone. Take a look at the right-hand side of the screen. Next one I'm going to click on is forecast. So this here tells me what it's going to be like for the rest of the day. There's the Friday. There's the date today. And then we go into Saturday. All the red is not good. All the green is good. Now, the red and the green are things I've set up myself, and I will show you that in a bit. Next, going to the right of the screen, wind profile click on that. It's going to show me all the details on the wind plus the temperature. And then going to your right-hand side of the screen, I'll click on map. This is my no-fly zone. So let me just zoom out here. There we go. I live in Ottawa, Canada, and all these circles are the no-fly zones. It's not very scary. It's because I've set them up based on the regulations in my country. If you look at the little guide on the bottom right, it shows, you know, TFR, DJI. The ones I'm most interested in are the large airport, medium airport, and small airport. See the colors of those? Now, I've set up what the radius is for each of those based on the regulations of my country. Let me just go to settings. So on settings, the very top is threshold. This is where you're going to set what you prefer as a pilot of a drone or an RC plane or whatever, what type of weather you prefer to fly in or go out. So let's go to threshold. First thing is I told it that I will not fly a drone if the wind is over 20 kilometers per hour. So I've set that's my threshold. So in other words, if it's over 20, give me a red square and tell me it's not good to fly. Next, I have the wind altitude at 30 meters. That's where, you know, who cares what the wind is on the ground? Because we don't fly our drones on the ground. We want to put them up in the air. So at 30 meters, what is the wind? That's usually where I fly at 30 meters height. Next, we go down to weather and minimum temperature. What is the minimum temperature I will fly in? Well, right here on my screen, I don't like flying in anything colder than minus 10 degrees Celsius. It's pretty cold. So I've set it at minus 10. And the same for the heat. You don't want to be outside when it's over 28 degrees Celsius. That is way too hot. And when it comes to the possibility of rain in the forecast, anything that's 40% or less, I will still go out. And you can see the max sky cover. I have it set at 50%. That's because if I fly a drone, I'm probably filming. So I don't want there to be a lot of clouds. I want there to be some sunlight. So as soon as that gets up to 60 or 70%, it's kind of a dull day. So I like it at 50. And there's my visibility. I have to keep visible sight of the drone. So five kilometers is more than enough. And there's GPS stats. I'm saying I don't want to fly a drone if I'm not going to get more than nine satellites. Next, we have no fly zone settings, and these are all set up by myself. So if you look at my screen, you can see I'm mostly concerned with large airports, medium airports, and small airports. And you can see on the right-hand side, I've set the radius based on the regulations of my country, how far I have to be away from an airport in order to fly a drone safely. And finally, we have the help screen, which will answer many of your questions. All right, back to me sitting on a chair. UAV forecast, pretty darn cool. If you don't have the app, I will put a link below to where you can get on Android and iOS. It is free, but you can also pay to get extra features. All right, so this brings me to the end of episode number two of my favorite 
things. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up and I will catch you in future videos with all sorts of reviews. Till then, take care.